Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be showing you a step-by-step -step guide of how to use NordVPN in 2025. I've been using VPNs for a long time, around 10 years or so, um, and um, I have reviewed almost every single one. You might be here because you decided on NordVPN, but if you're looking to step up your privacy even further, consider checking out one of my favorite affiliates. This is if you guys are like me, you're kind of worried about getting doxxed. You don't want your real life name being associated with your address, your phone number, and even this information related to your families. If someone finds that real life name, unfortunately, a lot of websites host this information for people to freely find for free. That's why I recommend a service like Incogni. I've reviewed almost all the services out there like this, and this one is still the best one. I personally use it myself so I could vouch for it. Why do I use it? Well, the simple answer is it does the same thing all the other ones do, except it's cheaper. $90 for one year. It will remove your information from all the websites out there on the internet so people can't dox you, find out your address, your phone number, and even the phone number of your friends and family. The cool thing is, is that it lets you have some flexibility. You can purchase the annual plan or monthly plan and other services out there like delete me are like twice as expensive and don't even have a monthly plan additionally incogni even has a annual plan where you can invite up to four people for around 200 dollars a year to move all their information as well so click the link in the description down below to support incogni and me i'll get a small cut back if you decide to purchase it but if you don't want to help support the channel, um, this video is not sponsored by Incogni. So I make no money just from this little ad if you decide not to purchase it. Just uh, one of my favorite products. And if you want to help support the channel and encourage your privacy to be better on the internet as well, check out the link in the description down below. You also should be able to get the best price, whatever the discount is. So guys, whether you're here for a VPN for a first time or maybe you've used another VPN, this guide will be perfect for you. So first up, let's go ahead and talk about the general interface here. This is kind of how NordVPN works. Basically what you do at the top left is connect. Um, you could just kind of click connect and it will connect and connect you to your server very quickly. I'm connected right here because I don't want to show you my public IP address, but if you're not connected, it will show you your IP address. And then when you connect, it will change the IP address showing that you are connected to the VPN. You can also click this pause feature. And what this does basically is just um, disconnect you from the VPN and make it easier to just kind of reconnect it later on. I think you can even kind of set it for a time as you can see here. So if in case you just kind of want to turn off for a little bit and reconnect automatically, that's a pretty useful feature from NordVPN. This feature right here will just kind of reconnect the connection if you're having issues. Um, this feature here will just kind of turn it off. You can also, um, so pause and then you have to turn it off basically right there next up we have this little tab that will show you weekly connection time and basically what this does is it will show you your stats and how long you've connected through the vpn um so as you can see here um you know without vpn and with vpn on um it's not really kind of changing right now i think it's because i'm connected next up though we have threat protection pro what this will do is kind of act like an antivirus light. It will protect you from ad trackers. Basically what that is, is if you go to websites, they kind of like to fingerprint you and kind of follow you on their internet to build up advertising profiles. This will kind of protect you from that, especially with something like Brave Browser, which will be good in conjunction with NordVPN. This one will protect you from visiting malicious websites that are kind of known in databases to be malicious. And this one will prevent you from downloading suspicious files. So if you're someone who's kind of new to using computers or maybe you kind of go to very sketchy websites often, this feature can be useful. And all you do is just click turn on and you wait a couple seconds and then it will be turned on like this. You could even manage it to um, kind of enable and disable specific features. So very easy to do. Um, so um, if you want to turn it off, um, you just do turn off, turn off, uh, turn off as well and uh, there you go as you can see it's turned off it kind of would be nice if they had a button to kind of turn it on and turn it off um, or turn it off like right here um, but you just kind of go in manually and kind of disable each one individually not a huge issue but maybe one day they'll kind of make a little more one one more button right here would be kind of be nice so let's go ahead and turn that off again um, like this and but you know you probably do want to turn that on there's not really any harm in that now meshnet is a feature that is a little bit more complicated um this one is kind of like a local area network or if you don't understand what that means basically think of it like your home kind of internet um and how you connect it on your computer and stuff like that 
basically what this does is if you turn this on and you install Nord on your phone, you could transfer files back and forth from your computer to your phone very quickly through a WireGuard tunnel. You could send files of any size securely and receive files in original quantity, uh, quality and quantity. So you don't have to connect your phone to your computer with a cable. This can also be used if you want to send your friend access to your network, if you want to do LAN gaming, if you want to send access to your media server and stuff like that. I've made one video doing a full run through of MeshNet. So if you're looking for a full explanation, um, it's around 10 to 15 minutes showing you every kind of way to use that. Check out that video in more detail. Not really any of the other VPN has this, and it is one of my favorite value propositions for NordVPN since they do include this for free and it's not like a paid upcharge, which is really nice. Next up, we have this tab, and this tab is just kind of more of a server tab, um, the home tab. Um, provides these little tablets and you know this provides a specific server kind of um, um, kind of layout there in some ways you know you don't even really need this tab you don't really need to worry about it unless you kind of like moving around the map or something like that to click an area but for the most part what I do um, is just search the country so you could do something like this and then if you click here you can see individual servers so, so that's how you do that um, pretty easy to use or you can just use auto fastest server but if you're in one of these states that's blocking porn or something like that you could pick a specific um, area and you'll get the ip in that area to bypass restrictions so that's kind of how you pick servers and stuff like that generally the quick connect feature will be fine for you it will find you a very fast server um, but more specifically if you look for a server close by that will also be a pretty good way to get the optimal speeds from NordVPN. This tab is just the threat protection. As we saw here, it kind of just takes you from here. So in some ways they don't even need a tab for this either, um, but it, it is kind of interesting to kind of be able to individually go to each portion of the application. Um, this section is for MeshNet file transfers. Like I said, if you're interested in learning more about that, check out the specific video I made. I've also made videos showing you how to make your own media server, the process behind it, the steps you'll need, and if you're interested in that video, check out this one. Both of these in conjunction will let you set up your own media server and remotely access them whenever you want, um, even if you're not home. So very cool. And again, NordVPN is the only VPN that lets you do that built in the application automatically from the own proprietary um, service that they've built themselves. But a lot of cool things about the app, like file sharing, for example, I do believe are open source. So it is a cool, trustworthy method to do that. Um, here is kind of the mesh net thing where you just turn it on. So very nice. Um, and here we have devices in mesh net. So this is kind of the file transfer section and the devices in mesh net and the file transfer works very simple. Um, it'll just kind of show you where it downloaded and you can go to it pretty quickly. Um, here is dark web monitor. This is kind of an, another extra feature you could pay for. Um, basically it'll kind of monitor your email and tell you if anything's been uh, leaked or anything like that and any services. Um, this is pretty similar to Have I Been Pwned, just another little value proposition. And there's even a little link here for NordPass. Up here is the notifications. Sometimes they'll send you little notifications for deals going on, like you can refer your friends, or there's a deal right now going on for dedicated IPs. Dedicated IPs are basically um, a assigned IP, not a random one that you'll get generated here. This can be useful for bypassing captchas and stuff like that. If that's what you're experiencing or being annoyed by. <clears throat> Sometimes it's nice to have a dedicated IP. If you do a lot of online banking or you use specific accounts on forums, if you use a different IP every time, sometimes it'll make you verify your account or something like that, depending on how strict the website is. Lastly, guys, the meat of the application is in the settings. Um, but for the most part, if you're new to VPNs, you don't even really have to worry about these too much. It just kind of lets you customize some things, some startup behaviors so like here. You can actually make the application light mode. Oh my God, my eyes are blinded, but I prefer the dark mode or just go to system to match your system's um, UI colors. Um, so there you go. Uh, we have connection settings here. You generally want to use, be using Nord links. You can use auto if you want to. Nord Whisper is actually their new protocol, which is very useful for bypassing VPN restrictions if that's something you're experiencing. If NordVPN isn't working, check out Nord Whisper and you will probably be able to connect all, almost all the time. So definitely a cool little thing they added. <clears throat> NordVPN is also secured against quantum encryption. Um, it won't activate with these certain protocols, but is it something you really need to use? In my opinion, well, probably not, unless you're really paranoid. 
And there hasn't really been proven case studies of computers being able to crack quantum resistant or crack encryption. Um, so, you know, it's still 10 to 15 years off, I would say, according to researchers and stuff like that. But it's nice to see VPNs kind of jumping ahead of that to just kind of secure the user's paranoia, basically. You can also customize when it connects based on different networks. Like if you're on a network, or if, you, if you're using Nord on a laptop and you go in a coffee shop, you could um, connect it on Wi-Fi networks automatically. So you're never leaking data to that coffee shop's uh, internet. You can also pick trusted networks. So if you're at home at Wi-Fi, it won't connect, but if you're in the coffee shop, it might connect. Um, so definitely kind of a convenience feature there. You can also customize um, whether the app disconnects or does whatever. Um, so let's say you want to disconnect when you close the application down, you just click up there and it'll disconnect or um, you could actually stay connected and it'll just kind of hide it. So kind of a cool little customization there. Custom DNS is useful if you want to use a specific ad blocking DNS or something like that, like Quad9, which is more for security. Um, Next DNS and these things can be customized to block specific ads. So it's cool that NordVPN kind of lets you integrate that within when connecting to a VPN. Additionally, you can also stay invisible on a LAN um, if you do want to do that and also allow remote access while connected to a VPN. So if you're using remote desktop applications, for example, so that could be something that is useful in individual circumstances. After that, guys, though, we have a couple more things. Kill switches are useful if you want to make sure you're not leaking your IP. You can also enable this in your QBitTorrent application. But basically what this does is that if NordVPN's application or connection drops unexpectedly, it's going to disable your internet on your computer so you'll never leak your IP. And when it comes to the application one, you can actually kill certain applications if NordVPN has issues. This can actually be kind of a convenience feature because you can enable this, select the Qubit Torn application, and then you can actually just close NordVPN down and it'll also close that one down. So kind of a kill two birds with one stone kind of situation. But basically this is just ensuring your IP never leaks if there's any issues. Next up we have split tunneling. And split tunneling is another cool feature that some VPNs don't have. You can basically turn VPN uh, NordVPN on and then use it for your browser to protect your anonymity while browsing and then not use it for games. So like if you're playing League of Legends or something like that, you can also use it for torrenting and nothing else, which is another really cool feature that NordVPN provides. And it's just as simple as adding an application um, to be tunneled. Um, you could kind of do it, you know, tunnel backwards and forwards. So if you want to use it for certain apps or disable for certain apps, it's kind of up to you. And that's really about it for NordVPN. I've covered almost every single setting. There are a couple other things like specialty servers. Um, if you're having some issues with VPNs or something like that, I think the new protocol, like I said, would be good. If you purchase a dedicated IP, you'll find it here. Um, but most of the stuff you don't really have to worry about. Double VPN will wrap it twice, but it will slow down your speeds and doesn't really seem worth it to me. Obfuscated servers might work if you're in a censored country and having issues connecting. Um, and then here you'll see your devices in MeshNet. Overall, guys, I hope that helps you with NordVPN. Let me know down in the comments down below if you like this tutorial. Let me know if you checked out Incogni. Um, it's a cool service and it'll help support the channel. I'm assuming since you're here, you already bought NordVPN. So I don't know if it would really be much use telling you to buy NordVPN with my links to get the best discount. But if you haven't already, links will be down in the description as well. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.